Sometimes you see people using the rotary table as a dividing head. And what I would like to do is to use the dividing head as a rotary table. Because I don't have one, but I have a dividing head. The idea is to make something in two parts. I take off this protection ring and here there are two locating surfaces. The horizontal one and then there is this vertical one and a 3 mm pitch thread. And the second part will be of course the table where I can mount a tree jaw chuck or something or a little vise or I'm gonna leave this center hole open so I can put some pieces in and I can round it. Now I think it's easier in two parts because if I have to make some modifications all I have to do is take it apart I have maybe easier to adapt it or make another one and put it back on. To make part one that's gonna look more or less like this ring here but bigger I think I found exactly what I need. And if you think it's a little bit overkill, you're right. I think so too. It's hard stuff and it leaves a very nice finish. Let's use some coolant. I'm testing out these uh, new to me inserts, I forgot the name of course, and they seem to work fine. They make these cute little springs, chips, and finish is not bad. It could be better, but I think it is not bad. As we could see in the little clip I just showed you, these TNMG inserts, they leave a nice finish, but not perfect. And I think that's because the angle of my tool here was not correct. We can clearly see the chip, if you rewind a little bit, the chip is curling and then rubbing here on the finished surface which will of course score the finish. I think it would work better with this kind of tool holder. Triangular, so not yet cut surface, cut surface and the chip will curl in direction of the not yet cut surface without touching the finished surface. I think that will be better. But of course, I don't have the right tool holder for it. So I will give it a go, but another time. But I will give you the results also. All right. Over to the band saw and cut off. I have to spin the part around because this guide here is touching the jowl and I can go any further. But we'll get there. I already installed the hockey puck here in the tree jowl, but first I think I gotta clear out a little bit this chip pan because uh, too much. I will also add some concentrate here in the coolant mix. The ideal dose is of course one splash. A 
Okay, let's continue. Let's make this thing look more or less like this. So, bore it out, cut the threads and make the right shoulder in here. That still really leaves a nice finish. I think even Matty could be proud of me now. The only tool I have to cut the threads here in my part is this one. But I don't have a tool holder for it. So first, let's make one. Voilà. That could work. My brand new little thread cutting tool that I just made will not work. Because a pitch of 3 mm, which means that my triangle in my cutting tool has to be at least more or less. 3 mm and this one is 2.5 so I made a brand new one and of course I also installed the gear train the way it should be and I checked with my thread gauge and indeed I have a pitch of 3 mm let's do this Officially speaking, this thing should now be on dimension. And normally when we cut threads, what we like to do is to take a test fit. But here of course it's a little bit impossible. I cannot take the chuck off because it is not repeatable. Of course, if I take the part out, it is not repeatable. If it's something wrong, I can put it back. So, let's gamble. I think I was lucky on this one. There is a, just a tiny bit too much slop to my liking, but I think it will be okay. Now that I know that the thing fits on here and could work very well, I already cut the right shoulder to take the top plate. And first, just to be sure that it's perfectly square and all this shit, I wanted to cut it here on the milling machine. And then I thought, that's not a good idea. because. The cutter is spinning that way and with the cutting forces my part could maybe unscrew and of course also lift. That could be a very serious crash. So I did it in the late to make the top plate that comes here on this shoulder of course. I have for the moment two options. Option one, using this thing, cut a piece off of course, and this is 
10 mm useful. It's a little bit over 10, but when I cut it all out, it will be 10 mm. Or I can sacrifice this little vise I made years ago. There's even a video of it. I think it was the second video I ever posted where I made this thing. And this thing is a little bit more consistent. Uh, it's about uh, 19 mm, I think. And I think this will be better to hold the chuck. Now this is the three jaw chuck of my late, which I think is way overkill. But I'm uh, the last couple of days I'm keeping my eyes open to find a cheap little chuck to mount on this thing. And I don't know what happens to people, but they ask more than if you buy new, so for a piece of uh, completely worn out rust. I don't get it, but okay. So let's start part two of this build. Yes, this bore is now on dimension and this part of course doesn't fit in here because I made a stupid measuring error. So this one back in the lathe and cut. Just a little spring pass and it will work. That's good. To drill the bolt holes in this part, of course I'm gonna use the dividing head because I don't have a DRO with bolt pattern system thing. And so I'm trying to find the center of my dividing head here. And this is the very first time I use this center finder. And it's even the very first time in my life I use a center finder, so I'm fighting a little bit. And I think there is a little bit a problem. For the moment this thing tells me that I'm one one hundredth of a millimeter out of center. And when I spin it, as you can see, it's getting worse. And the camera can't film it of course, but when I spin it the other side, it is almost half a millimeter. And to me that absolutely makes no sense. So if someone knows what's happening, please put it in the comments, because I don't have a clue. So I use the edge finder. That also works very well. Let's drill and tap some holes in here. Tapping by hand. Primitive. All the holes in part one are drilled and tapped. And now I'm ready to locate the holes in part two. And to do so, I first drilled one hole and put a little screw in here 
so I'm sure this thing will not rotate in relationship to the part one thing here and uh, let's do this I'm making the countersinks for my little bolts here and the countersink is 8 mm and the head of the bolt is 8.5 and of course I don't have an 8.5 or 9 mm cutter so I will cut the bolt heads down in the lathe. Perfect. I just finished to drill the last three holes in here and I'm ready to do the final assembly. I think. Alright. Let's put something straight in here and check for runout. To install my something straight here, first I had to flip the jowls around because otherwise it doesn't hold well. And now... Less than two one hundredths of a millimeter is less than one half a tau for the Imperials. To me, I think that's a nice result. And now that the thing is finished and I know it works, what are my future projects with it? I don't know. <laughs>